speaker on in, in debate. Uh, the, uh, the chair recognizes the honourable member for South Shore St. Margaret's. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to deal with the ruling of the Speaker with regard to the production of documents uh, ordered by this House on the scandal involving Sustainable Development Technologies Canada, otherwise known as the Liberal Billion Dollar Green Slush Fund. The process for those watching was that the House ordered the production of these documents around the scandal to the law clerk, which could then be transferred to the RCMP for investigation. As we know, the power of, uh, of the House is greater than any one act, yet the Prime Minister's personal department, the PCO, decided to execute this order by telling departments to re send in documents but redact them. As a result, that was, in our view, and obviously in the Speaker's view, a breach of members' privileges because the order from the House did not say redact. As a result, we're here to discuss this today, and it's been referred to the uh, PROC Committee for further consideration. So in doing this, it's pretty important to understand there's some objections from the government, as there has been, about some alleged uh, breach of the Charter. Well, there is no breach of the Charter, and here's why. If uh, a criminal activity is suspected in a company you own, say a bank, you're part of a bank management team, and you discover that somebody who works for you has stolen the money of depositors, that company has the right, indeed it has the obligation, to call in the police and to turn those documents over to the police. It does not require the police to go to court to get access to those documents, that owner of that company, that management team, can supply those documents to the police to start the investigation. Why does that matter with regard to this instance? We have a foundation that was set up in 2001 called Sustainable Development Technology Canada with the purpose of providing uh, taxpayer financial assistance to green technology companies before they're commercialized. Since this government has been elected, they've received a billion dollars of taxpayer money. And the result of that, and probing by parliamentary committees, is that we found that in 82 percent, 82 percent of the funding transactions approved by the Board of Directors during a sample period, a five-year period that the Auditor General looked at, 82 percent of those transactions were conflicted. So that's a number. What does that mean? According to the Auditor General, that's $330 million of taxpayer money that was given to companies where the board members who voted to give it to that company, those companies, had a conflict of interest. In addition, the Auditor General found that that same board approved another $59 million of projects that they weren't authorized to do. They were outside of the mandate of the foundation that the government and parliament set up. They broke the SDTC contribution agreements, and these directors broke the conflict of interest laws of Canada as public office holders, and they broke the SDTC Act. So how did they break them? What does that act say? Those two acts say. You know what they say? They say that a governor and council appointment a person appointed by the government entrusted to oversee taxpayer money is not to personally profit from their work on that committee as a GIC appointment, and neither is their family. Yet that's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened. And the Auditor General found in a five-year period where there were 405 transactions approved by the board, the Auditor General sampled 226, so only half of them, and found that 186 of those 226 transactions were conflicted. That's the 82 percent. That's the 330 million. If the Auditor General looked at all 400 transactions, statistically that would probably mean the rest are just as conflicted. And that 400 transactions is 800 and $32 million of taxpayer money. So these liberal hand-picked appointees 
of the Prime Minister from the chair on got themselves into a position to benefit their own companies. So how did they do that and what were their conflicts? Every transaction, every bit of money approved by the billion dollar green slush fund, every single dollar had to be approved by the board of directors. And the way the system worked was that beforehand they would send out a note of what transactions were on the board and directors would declare a conflict. So at the beginning of every board meeting they'd say, here's the list of transactions we're considering, here's the list of which directors are conflicted with which companies, so now let's go to work. And in some cases the director would stay in the room, according to the minutes, while they were voting on their own project. In other cases, the director would get up and leave the room while they voted on it, and then that director would come back into the room, and the next director would get out of the room for their project. A nice, little, tidy conspiracy of conflict of interest to enrich themselves and the values of their companies. One director in particular was particularly uh, aggressive at this. Appointed in 2016 by, by the Prime Minister, her name's Andre Lise Matot. She runs a venture capital firm called Cycle Capital and Green Technology. And Andre Lise Matot, her companies before and during her time on the board received $250 million. That one director, her companies received $250 million in grants from SDTC. Now, some of that was before, and I'll talk about that before in a minute, but while she was on the board, 114 million, 114 million went to companies, green companies that she had invested in. And during her time on the board, the value of her company, Cycle Capital, tripled. Because getting an SDTC grant is a stamp of Government of Canada approval, which allowed those companies to raise other funds. You'll never guess who her lobbyist was. Any guesses? Any guesses who her lobbyist was? Her in-house paid lobbyist for 10 years before he was elected? The current radical minister of the environment. Wow. While he was lobbying for Cycle Capital, the current radical minister of the environment got $111 million. And not only that, that minister that minister lobbied, according to the Re Lobbyist Registration Act, lobbied the Prime Minister's office and the industry department 25 times, 25 times in the year before he was elected. And guess what? For all his hard work, he owns shares in Cycle Capital, and he still owns those shares. He's not answered how much the value of those shares have gone up since they've been granted and since that company got this kind of support. But if that wasn't bad enough, this particular director in 2022 left and went to the Canada Infrastructure Bank Board. And what's the first thing that she did at the Canada Infrastructure Bank Board? Voted $170 million of infrastructure bank money for a company owned by the chair of the Green Slush Fund, Annette Fisheron. Now, Annette Fisheron also sought $6 million for the Fisheron Centre at Cape Breton Centre, at the Fisheron Centre at Cape Breton University because it was failing. SDTC said no when it went through the process. This is a conflict. But in emails, they said, we will help you find money from other government departments. And pretty soon after that, she got, her company got 50, uh, the Sharon Center got about 10 million, 12 million dollars from ACOA and ISET. And her other companies got 50 million dollars from Natural Resources Canada. And then of course, there's the Infrastructure Bank one. This is the story that we see. Nine directors, according to the Auditor General, made up those 186 conflicts. Now, that's why the CFO of the industry department, when the whistleblower called on him, said, and sat down with him, said, this is way bigger than the Kretchen government sponsorship scandal, which was $42 million of right. taxpayer money going to advertising agencies right. and friends of the Liberal Party. Way bigger. 
And this is just the tip of the iceberg. So why we're asking for the documents is every time we have a witness at committee, every time we ask a question, new information comes out. The government has opposed us at every step of the way of getting those documents, and we know why. Just the scratch of the surface by the Auditor General, which is a small part, is $390 million to Liberal insiders. That's what they're trying to hide. That's why they're opposing this production order for got to be turned over to the RCMP. That's why the Prime Minister's personal department, the PCO, defied the order of this House to produce these documents and ordered departments to redact all the sensitive information out. And surprisingly, they used a lot of black ink when they put those things in. Uh, they really went through a lot of toner on photocopiers when they printed this thing out because it's all blacked out. What are they hiding? What they're hiding is more malfeasance and abuse of the taxpayer money. Because we know that little bit that we've seen, 226 of 400 transactions by the Auditor General, is just the tip of the iceberg. And that's $390 million. Apparently, that doesn't concern Liberals for some reason. It doesn't concern them that this happened. It doesn't concern the Minister of Industry who has had not a single meeting with the new acting board or the NRC where he's proposing it. And you know what? That new transparency that he said he would do in June? They're giving out money again and not one single bit of information is available anywhere on the website. SDTC used to put out a quarterly report on every company, every single company. They no longer do. It's silent. It's hidden. And the corruption of this organization and the nine Liberal directors in abusing taxpayer money in this way is beyond anything I've ever seen and I know many members of this House have ever seen. And Mr. Speaker, I understand I will continue with uh, enlightening the House after question period. The Honourable Member will have eight minutes remaining uh, when we do return to debate on, on the issue. As, as quickly as possible. And I believe when we left a debate on the privilege motion, the Honourable Member for uh, South Shore St. Margaret's had eight minutes left in his debate before going to the ten minutes of questions and comments. The Honourable Member for South Shore St. Margaret's. The Parliamentary Secretary of the Government House Leader suggested nine. I'll take that if he'll give it to me. Um, Mr. Speaker, thank you again. I will resume. Summarize where we are. We're, we're debating the Speaker's ruling on the privilege motion where the Prime Minister's Department, the PCO, redacted documents against the House order to provide documents uh, with regard to the Liberal Green Slush Fund to the law clerk and transfer them to the RCMP for investigation. And where I left off was in the middle of discussing the various uh, conflicts of interest of various directors. And you'll recall I was talking about the director, Andre Lise Matot, who owns a company called Cycle Capital, whose companies have received $250 million both before and during her time on the Green Slush Fund board, whose lobbyist before he went into this House is the current Radical Minister of the Environment in his time as the lobbyist for Cycle Capital after lobbying 25 times in his last year before entering this House. Uh, the PMO and the Industry Department they received over $100 million in green slush fund money to cycle capital. And, shockingly, he still owns shares on that, even though this government, and as a cabinet minister, he participated in discussions that gave the green slush fund another $750 million, of which over a quarter of all the money has gone to that company. He still owns shares in it. He hasn't disclosed what they're worth, but, you know, I know he's familiar with orange jumpsuits, sh yes. but I think, I think this needs to be explored more by the RCMP, and hopefully the documents mm -hmm. will show that when they're transferred. Mm -hmm. Now, I will speak also about another board member appointed, handpicked by this Prime Minister, Guy Met, who has admitted in committee that $17 million of green slush fund money went to companies he has a financial interest in. Now, he said it's a small amount of money. It may be a small amount of money to him, 
but it isn't to most Canadians. And that amount of money, he admitted, had gone up 1,000 percent, 1,000 percent in value since that investment was made in 2019. It pays to be a Liberal insider. Now, I'll, I'll bring your attention to another director, a fellow named Steve Kukucher from British Columbia. Steve Kukucher was, guess what, a political staffer to former Liberal Environment Minister Anderson. And he was the organizer for the Liberal Party for this Prime Minister in British Columbia. And as a reward, they put him on the Greed and Slush Fund board. And surprisingly, we have another Liberal on the board whose companies that he had a financial interest in of almost $5 million on his time on the board, the companies he had a financial in received from the very board he was serving on. He said they were small amounts of money, but in committee, unlike Mr. Humet, he didn't have the courage to say how much the value of his investments have gone up, and that's why these documents need to be produced and why these directors need to be investigated. We all know about Annette Vichurin. So let me talk to you a bit about one of the funds that was established, or one of the processes that they established. They established something called accelerators. And those accelerators were outside organizations that the board hired to vet proposals and make recommendations to the board. Guess who some of those were? An organization called the Vichurin Center at the University of Cape Breton, which is in the name and set up by the chair of the Green Slush Fund. Mars, Mars District in Toronto, U of T, you've, you probably know that. Guess who chairs Mars? The chair of the Green Slush Fund, Annette Bersharin. So companies would be screened through organizations board members controlled, and shockingly, their companies got recommended for funding to the board. That's just a pure coincidence. 82% of the transactions that they approved directors, nine directors, were conflicted with. These directors do not represent 82% of the green technology industry in Canada, yet their companies got 82% of the funding. Strangely, pure coincidence with these hand-picked directors from the Prime Minister. So what we're debating here is this issue of systemic conflict of interest and corruption in this Green Slush Fund. We only know right now about $390 million because there has not been a forensic audit done by the Auditor General. The Auditor General did a sampling of things. The Ethics Commissioner has not investigated any of the other directors other than the one that my colleague from Leeds Grenville asked to be investigated. And when I asked the Ethics Commissioner if he had power to investigate anyone who is a GIC appointment, he said yes. When I asked the Ethics Commissioner why he had not investigated the other eight GIC appointments put out in the Auditor General's report as having conflicts of interest where money flowed to companies they had an interest in, you know what the Ethics Commissioner said before committee? What would be the point of that? What would be the point of investigating GIC appointments of people who are no longer on the board? That's what the Ethics Commissioner of this institution said. I said, perhaps, because we pay you to do that, the taxpayers pay you to root it out, to discover and expose conflicts of interest of GIC appointments, appointments by these Liberals, of feather bedding, insiders, funneling money. Perhaps you should do your job for a change. He isn't doing his job. He was shocked that anyone would ask him that. So why is all of this important? Every one of us here is sent here to be very careful at expending and spending the very hard-earned money that Canadians make that we are privileged to oversee. That's an essential part of our job. This organization stuffed their own pockets with taxpayer money. Yet these Liberals are fighting it. They say it's not our role. It's not our role. The taxpayer money was authorized by this Parliament. 
We oversee, and the Minister of Industry is responsible yeah. for 40 months. He sat there with an ADM in every meeting, this current Minister of the Environment, and did absolutely nothing until it made it into the press. This is corruption like we've never seen in Canada. This is why we've asked for the documents, because they're hiding documents. This is why the Liberals are resisting the hiding of the documents, because they know there's more corruption there with their hand-picked directors. And if we were a private sector institution, we would be turning those documents over to the police to investigate. And that's our job. No, it's not just the police's job to go to the go to the courts to seek that. It's our job to expose the corruption and the things that we've authorized money for in this parliament. It's our job, and it's time they start caring about it. Let's hear it.